Welcome back. A year ago, I don't think we would have thought that we would still be in the middle of a pandemic, let alone another surge going on around us. Our next guest wants to help us feel a little bit more at ease with this continued uncertainty. Joining us live this morning is Dr. David Rakowski, a licensed clinical psychologist and president of Wellington Counseling Group. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for being with us. We could all use a few words of encouragement these days. How do we cope with all this uncertainty around us? Well, you know, it, it's so interesting because when I when I talk about this um, pandemic purgatory that we're sort of in right now, I think about all the, the patients I've talked to at Wellington Counseling Group, my colleagues, friends and family, myself as a business owner and as a as a as a, uh, a parent, we're just in this holding pattern, right? And and it's kind of like that airplane that's been circling the airport for months and months, waiting for the open runway, um, and we're running out of fuel. So a lot of us are, are running short on on patience and wondering. When can we start planning? When can we start doing the things we wanted to do and love doing? And so that's why, um, you know, I started thinking about how can we help people? And one of the things that comes up for me is the idea that we need to feel a little bit more control of our lives and our schedule. Sure. And how do we do that <laughs> with so many things uh, going on around us that we don't have any control of with mandates and surges and variants? And we, you know, like I said, we're, we're still in the middle of it. We are definitely in the middle of it. And the longer this goes on, the longer the middle feels. And so what I've been telling people and been trying to exercise myself is this idea that there have got to be some things in your life that, that you can plan regardless of what's going on out there. And those are the things you need to identify as soon as possible and start really leaning on those things. What can I plan? What, what's a social event that I can safely plan? What's a travel event that I can safely plan? And then work on those with the people that, uh, that you, you want to be with. I noticed for me, especially last summer, I was pregnant and it just felt like a lot, you know, with the pandemic, the start of the pandemic and the first surge, I needed something to look forward to. Is that part of this? Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, even in non-pandemic times, what I tell people when they're feeling down or having a funk is you've got to isolate three things. You've got to find something in the next week or 10 days that you can look forward to. Something in the intermediate future, maybe it's a couple of months, um, a travel thing or a concert you want to go to. And then you got to think about the, the remote future. What are the things you're looking forward to, whether that's the way you'll retire or the, the things you're waiting to do, like a, a large milestone event or a birthday. And I think that's, that's true now. What are those things that you can plan? Figure those out and lean on them. Do you think that's, um, some people would hear that and say, well, but you also just need to be content. You need to be content with your life and not always looking for the next big thing. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it is and it isn't because I think as humans, we've evolved on this earth as planners. We have this big old brain that we've mm -hmm. evolved with and, and why we've survived all these years is because we plan. We have the capacity to use that brain and plan. And so when we can't use it in that way, it's very frustrating and really disorienting for us. So as a mom with small children, the humdrum of life, the same routine, the same schedule, the same snack time, the same quiet time, all that can kind of be a lot day in and day out. Now you throw a pandemic in and, and, and you're restricted. You can't do anything. Talk to us about how, what we can do if we're feeling frustrated by the ebb and flow of this. Well, listen, just like new moms have mom buddies, other parents that have kids around the same developmental period, same age, you know, I think it's okay to also find pandemic buddies. It's not too late in this whole experience to identify the people that kind of see safety for yourself and others the way you do. And, uh, and to, to cling to those people in making the plans that, that may feel safer and keep you from going bonkers. And why do you think people are so frustrated right now? We're all very much on mm -hmm. edge, it feels like. Well, I'll tell you what, what I'm seeing a lot. People are telling me there's this um, there's this analogy you may have heard of, which is like the class project. And if you think of this whole pandemic for our country as a class project and getting out of it, getting businesses started again, getting our lives back again, then the people who have taken certain precautions and followed the science feel very strongly that they have done the work in this class project, whereas the people who have downplayed the danger, ignored the things that can be helpful, are the ones who are getting the same grade at the end without all the effort. I see. Okay. Well, That's for, what I'm hearing. For more information, you can go to wellingtoncounselinggroup.com. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, doctor. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, still to come, college football is 